Isn't it what a wonderful day outside? No, it's not. It's 7.39 outside, and it's still dark and gloomy. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Today we're going to be going over parts of a flower, fertilization and that sort of stuff, as well as trophisms and fruits versus vegetables. My guess is this is going to be quite a long video, so stick with me. Fast forward through the parts you don't need, and um, we will make it through this one. I haven't used this color. That color, this color, this color, this color, this color. Okay, this is the one other color I haven't used all night, so I'm going to have to do this one. Pedicle. Okay, well, <laughs> pedicle. I got to tell you what a pedicle is. Flower parts. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Plo. Plo. <laughs> that, <laughs> that doesn't even start to be correct. Flower parts. This is wonderful. Sometimes flowers are pink. I guess it goes kind of. This is weird. Pedicle. Pedicle. What is a pedicle? It's the stalk that supports the flower. Stalk which supports the flower. That means supports, right? Because it's like underneath. Anyway, so that's part number one. Part number two is the receptacle. What does this do? Well, um, it's the enlarged end of the pedicle. So what you have is the pedicle here, and then you have the receptus aid, and then you have different parts going out, and then you have the flowers and this sort of stuff. So this part is the receptus aid, rep receptacle. That's a mispronunciation. It's receptacle, and um, it holds the remainder of the flower parts. Those are the main structural ones. Now we get to go into the reproductive ones. Reproductive. Now, guess what? Guess what? There's four of these. Number three, we have sepals. What are sepals? They're the outermost ring. They're collectively called the calyx. They are often green and protect other floral parts as they form within the bud. So these protect protect, there we go, other floral parts, parts during development, I'm just going to say that, during development, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Number four, we have petals, petals are attractive, they're colorful, colorful, there we go. Petals are colorful. Um, they're just inside the sepals, and um, collectively they're called the corolla. Basically, I believe petals' main function is to attract um, bees and that sort of stuff, as well as the nectar, but it attracts them to it, um, the right flower, so that they can um, start making seeds. All right, number five is the stamen. What is the stamen? It's the male reproductive part. Um, let's see. Um, what's important about this? Well, the main part is the anther. Now, within the anther, um, you have pollen grains which are formed, right? So you have this. This is going to be a string that's part of the flower. This is the anther. And within here you have four cavities, and within those you have pollen grains being formed. Now these pollen grains are going to be transferred to the pistil. The pistil is the female reproductive uh, part. Um, it's the most inward part. It's the um, the uppermost part is called the stigma, um, which has a sticky surface. Um, the pistil this thing, you know. Um, so this has the sticky surface, it kind of goes down to the ovary. The ovules um, is what contains the um, the basically the seeds that will get fertilized. Now, that's the first part of the video out of the way. We have three main um, I don't know what to call them, reproductive cycles, I suppose you can call them. 
And the first one is pollination. The first one is pollination. Now, in pollination, pollen is transferred um, from an anther, so from an anther to a stigma. Now, a stigma is um, basically the large, the, the female part. Now, the anthers and stigma are usually positioned so that they don't. Um, so that they don't cross, or so that they don't self-pollinate, they want to be cross-pollinated, but sometimes it happens. And they are also positioned so that anything attempting to reach nectar must pass them, adding um, to pollination. Um, the second part is fertilization. Um, in sup in summary, this is when the um, the union of the gametes. Now, gametes are um, basically the um, the sexual mediums, so, right? So you have the pollen. Um, basically, the pollen lands on the stigma. Um, there's a pollen tube. Um, the sperm nuclei go down, and they um, they fuse with the egg cell to form a diploid zygote that will eventually develop into an embryo. Okay, um, after that, another sperm fuses with the two polar nuclei, resulting in a triploid nucleus. And um, this forms the endosperm, which provides food for the embryotic plant. Okay, so what you have is one sperm cell goes, fertilizes the egg. Another one goes, kind of latches on, so you have this 3N um, triploid um, thing. What this third one is going to do is it's going to make... Um, the endosperm, which is like if you have this, that's a terrible picture. If you have this and this, you have the two cotyledons there and there, and then this is basically the food that's kind of made by that. Anyway, um, germination is the third. Germination is the third, and it's um, it's basically just when the embryonic plant. begins its growth. So, to review, pollination is when pollen uh, goes to the stigma. Fertilization is when the pollen goes from the stigma to the egg cell, and then the sperm create that zygote, and then the third one goes to form the endosperm. I want to make sure I'm not using the wrong term then. Yeah, endosperm, that's correct. And then germation is when the embryonic plant starts to grow. Um, for this to happen, there's three main things. Proper um, moisture, right? You want there to be good moisture. You want a proper temperature, and that depends. And then you need oxygen. Oxygen is very important for your cellular respiration, for the beginning functions to go on and um, that sort of stuff. Okay, we are so close guys, we have almost made it. Third part, trophisms. Trophisms basically is um, trophisms. What attracts growth of plants? You have phototrophism, gravitrophism, um, you have Thigmotrophism, and then you have chemotrophism. Photo is light, right? So this is like um, the growth towards light. Gravitrophism is um, gravity. So this is like roots, they go down. That's um, positive trophism, it's a positive response because of gravity. Um, thigmotrophism is touch or contact. And um, an example of this would be like um, when something grows around a wire, a plant grows around around a wire, and chemotrophism is um, chemicals attracting, and this is like when you have the um, the pollen tube, the pollen tube, because what happens is the pollen tube you have the um, top of the stigma here where the pollen lands, and then you have a pollen tube with the 
sperm going down. And um, that's pretty much it. Fruit. A fruit is a mature ovary with seeds inside. That's all it is. Vegetable, something that's not that. Um, balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. I'm not going to write this down. I'm just going to tell it to you. Six carbon dioxides plus 12 oxygens with sunlight produce a glucose molecule. Six oxygen released to the atmosphere and six water, in case you need to know that. Cellular respiration. A glucose plus six oxygen. Um, with the use of enzymes yields um, 6 carbon dioxide plus 6 water and 36 to 38 ATP. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So, um, there you go. Um, I hope this um, really helped. Now this is going to be a an overview. I don't know why I can't draw. So I hope this guy. I hope this helped you guys um, understand at least a little bit. And uh, give me your suggestions.